Is everyone in Hawaii a surfer? Does Hawaii have an actual place to ski? And is everyone leaving Hawaii because it's way too expensive? The answer to that is yes. We're gonna talk about that and a whole lot more. So let's get laid, get drunk, and get after it. We're gonna unbox the state of Hawaii. Aloha, that means hello and goodbye. Welcome, we're in Hawaii now, so we have to speak the native language. Hoa, that means friend. Oh, aloha, hello friend. Neat, right? Looks like you're here because you're thinking about buying some property in Hawaii and making this your permanent home. Well, it's a good choice. I mean, look at the place. And this is the World Surfing Championships here at the North Shore in Oahu. Look at those waves and the ocean and all around you, ah. Surfing was invented in Polynesia and that art was brought to Hawaii where it became a worldwide sensation. Here on the North Shore, waves average 16 feet high in the winter and at their peak, they can get 50 feet high. Some Hawaiian waves have been 100 feet high. Can you imagine that? Surfing a 100 foot wave? I can't. Seven million people come to the state every year to see sites like this. But odds are if you moved here, you wouldn't surf. I mean, it looks pretty hard. And you wouldn't want to know where the tourist spots are either. No, you want to know where you can live. Right now, a lot of the middle class is being squeezed out. And the ones who can afford to leave are leaving the island in droves. And meanwhile, a lot of rich people are moving here in big numbers. Currently in Hawaii, there's a lot of back and forth from the mainland. If you're one of the people coming here, you got to know where to go. This is Hawaii. Now, I know you can't see much from a higher level, but don't worry, we're going to zoom into each region. Hawaii has all sorts of different areas where you can live, just like the state where you are has different regions. Hawaii is made up of more than 130 islands, but there are eight main islands in the chain, and each one has its own culture, way of life, and cost. We're going to begin up here at the top of the chain in Niihau, and then travel down all the other islands and talk about each one of those too. The island of Niihau is about 6 miles wide and 18 miles long. It's about the same size as Tampa, Florida. Now this island isn't really anywhere you can actually live. Actually, you can't even go here unless you're invited. That's because it's privately owned. That's right, the whole island. Way back in 1864, a woman named Elizabeth Sinclair purchased this whole island from the then King of Hawaii for only $10,000. Since then, her descendants and others have made this island their home. There's officially only about 170 people who live here, but nobody really knows how many people actually make this place a home on a regular basis. There's no power lines or plumbing here, everything's solar. You can apparently pay to hunt here for stuff like wild sheep, boars, and oryx. But if you move to Hawaii, unless you're very well connected, you won't step foot on this island. So it's time to leave. And we can't just drive to the next island because there's no bridges between them. Plus, Hawaii roads are terrible anyways, which is something you realize once you moved here. To get from island to island, you have to take a plane or a boat. But we're only going 40 miles, so we'll just take this thing. We'll be fine. Hop in. We're going to Kauai now. Our next stop along the Hawaiian island chain is here in Kauai, home to only 72,000 people. This island is about 25 miles wide and about 33 miles long, and it's a little bit bigger than the city of Phoenix. Kauai is where you're going to find a lot of lush landscapes, amazing shorelines with rugged coasts, and waterfalls everywhere. Some of the videos here look like this island was created using special effects. Some say it's the prettiest of all Hawaiian islands. Of course, on an island like this, there aren't going to be any large shopping centers. This is more of an outdoorsy, natural place where people live a simple life. On this island, you'll find a lot of hippies and fringe religious types and people who are into crystal healing and yoga and who have dreadlocks and B.O. If you have B.O., you'd fit right in here in Kauai. A typical home here in Kauai is going to run you about 700 k and going up all the time. But you get what you pay for. I mean, look at the place. I mean, you could go total native and build a grass hut like this for nothing, but that's not gonna be something most people would be comfortable doing. So no, Hawaii isn't all tiki houses, nor is it a place where women wear coconut bras and skirts and flowers behind their ear. A few people here do that, but most people dress just like you and me. A lot of people here do wear Hawaiian or Aloha shirts here. I mean, they kind of have to, right? And leis are mostly worn by tourists as they get off the plane or at special events like a wedding or a graduation or luau which is a celebration where they play music and eat dead things. 
People in Hawaii eat a lot of papayas, mango, and avocados. They eat a lot of pork and rice plates, poi, chicken, pigs, and fish, and have a unique barbecue, which many say isn't very good. They also eat 7 million cans of Spam a year here. Odds are if you moved here, you'd eventually eat a lot of Spam, and you'd probably buy a rice cooker too. And no, they don't sip Mai Tais all day. The local fave is Heineken. Come on now. The Hawaiian culture is a very complicated one that would take a whole video to explain. But the short version is the Polynesians were here first, and then many other people were brought over here to serve as immigrant laborers for the sugar and pineapple industries. Today, Hawaii is 25% white, 27% Asian, 10% native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander, 10% Hispanic, 23% mixed race, and 2% black. So it's pretty diverse. In fact, it's our most diverse state of all. This is the state with the highest Asian population and the lowest white population. Politically, the state's very blue. They only voted to elect a Republican a president twice in the state's short 60-year history. I mean, this was only a state since 1959. And no, weed isn't legal here, though you think it was based on how much smoke is in the air. In terms of where you can live here on Kauai, keep in mind this is the least populated island where you can actually live, so the cities aren't going to be very big. The biggest place here is called Kapaha, and there's only 10,000 people there. There's a few other places with 5,000 people here in Kauai. This isn't a place with a lot of jobs, so you're going to have to have one lined up or work from home. The only really well-paying jobs on most Hawaiian islands are going to be careers they need, like teachers and hospital workers. But this is the most remote place you can live in this state, far away from the smoke plumes of volcanoes and the crowded urban concrete jungle you'll find in places like Oahu. Welcome to Oahu! Now this is where most of the tourists and newcomers end up. Oahu is a bit smaller than the city of Houston, but there are way more people here than anywhere else in Hawaii. Like there's close to a million people on Oahu, which is like three times more than all the other islands combined. Now this is where Hawaii stereotypes go to die. Oahu is the reason some call Hawaii a massively overhyped, overrated, crowded, and expensive place. It's not an island paradise away from reality. No, here in Oahu, you're going to have ghettos, crime, congestion, and pollution. Lots of people here are poor. The unemployment rate is by far the highest in the country. And the homeless population here is the highest per capita in the nation too. A lot of the homeless here are intentional homeless. People who want to be homeless but want to be warm and have access to weed. So they come to Oahu. Part of the homeless problem here is also because of the really high cost of living. Like here in Oahu, the average home is a million bucks. But they give you a 50 year loan to be able to afford that mortgage. Gas is like $4 a gallon. Milk is $8 a gallon. A beer at the local dive is going to set you back 7 bucks. It is the most expensive state to live in the country, Hawaii is. And they just increased the income tax to an astounding 16% people, which is also by far the highest in the nation. Low property taxes are just about the only real benefit. It's really hard to live here, which is why a lot of people are leaving Oahu for places like California, Oregon, and Nevada. If you move here, try to get the Kama Aina discount at stores. That means you're a local and sometimes you won't have to pay the astronomical tourist prices for everything. Crime-wise, it's not too bad here, but there's plenty of property crimes. So that's good, I guess. They're not killing each other over there. If you need a good job or you want to live somewhere that resembles the mainland, Oahu is going to be your best bet. In terms of where to live, generally it depends on cost and weather, mostly. Like, what can you afford and do you want hot and dry or wet and tropical? The western sides of the Hawaiian Islands are going to be much drier and almost desert-like in many areas. There's even cactus over here. The locals tend to live on the western sides of the islands because they don't mind the heat. On the eastern sides of the islands, it's much rainier and tropical. There's a 50-inch difference in rainfall per year depending on which side of the island you're on. On Oahu, in particular, the east side of the island has all the best beaches and million-dollar homes in places like Kailua. The southeast part of the island is where all the wealthy Republicans live. The University of Hawaii is down here in this part of the state. The south side of Oahu is where you're going to find most of the tourists. Honolulu, the state capital, is right here. This is the largest, most remote, and isolated city in the world, based on how far away you are from everybody else. There's 350,000 people in Honolulu, in many, many different types of neighborhoods you can live in. And people are pretty surprised when they show up here and they see towering skyscrapers and traffic like they thought it was going to be all isolated villages or something. No, Honolulu is a big city and there's a lot going on here. There's Waikiki, the traditional tourist trap where you will see people in grass skirts and lots of bars and restaurants. Now, this is not where you come to find your aloha. This is where you come to get drunk. To find your aloha, 
you need to go to a more remote place in the state. Of course, Honolulu isn't all touristy stuff. Like, just down the road, you have places like Kalihi Valley, which is ghetto. There's a lot of ghettos in and near Honolulu, just like where you live. Pearl Harbor is here. We all know what happened there. Definitely a black eye in the American history, that was. Up here in the middle of the island, between two extinct volcanoes, is Mililani, which is a good place to raise families. There's 27,000 people here, but there's also a lot of rich, snobby people there, too. Kopole, down here, is another good place to raise families. I hope I'm saying that right. There's a few biggish cities on the western, hot, and dry side of Oahu, places with somewhere between 10 and 20,000 people. It's really pretty. And up here on the north end is where all the surfers go to die. Literally. This is the North Shore which is not as crowded, it's fairly nice, and where ocean waves are known worldwide. Did you know surfing is one of the oldest sports on Earth? I think I kind of did mention that, Mappy, yeah. Surfing goes back a long, long ways. Can you surf, Mappy? Sure I can. Awesome, Mappy. You think she's so cool doing that? I don't get it. Where's my assistant anyways? I need somebody to set up my chair. Everybody's getting unemployment these days. <laughs> yes, they are, Karen. Yes, they are. So anyways, the best surfers in the world come from Hawaii, and many of them are from right here on the North Shore. But not everybody in Hawaii surfs. Come on now. If you're not into surfing, there's also stand-up paddleboarding, swimming, scuba diving, snorkeling, kayaking, rowing, kiteboarding, and then outside of the water, plenty of hiking and mountain biking. And you can hula hoop here too. Hula was invented here in Hawaii. It's a big part of the Hawaiian culture, but it's pretty hard to get good at, supposedly. Doesn't look too hard, though. Remember these? Quick now, run through your hula hoop. Even play giant horseshoes. Become a hula hoop expert. Do the amazing upsy daisy. It'll climb like magic. Win your big neighborhood contest. Everybody's playing with the new Whammo hula hoop. Buy yours today at all toy drug and department stores. Get one, get two, get more. It's the new amazing <laughs> Whammo hula hoop. Well, it's time to leave Oahu and head on to our next Hawaiian island to explore, Molokai. Hey, who's that in my boat? She's kind of hot. Well, that weird chick just needed a ride, so we dropped her off at some sketchy beach. Hopefully she found what she was looking for. So here we are in Molokai. Now, this is the opposite of Oahu in just about every way. It's very slow-paced here. The island is also small. It's about 10 miles across and 38 miles long. It's about the same size as El Paso, Texas. There's only 7,500 people here, so if you were looking to live the nomad life, then this would be a good option. A lot of the island here is taken up by farmland. There's a lot of cattle ranching, and Hawaii grows the most bananas, macadamia nuts, papayas, and coffee than any other state. They used to produce a bunch of sugar and pineapples here, but no longer because of foreign competition, mostly. Many of the locals here on Molokai are unemployed and poor, since a lot of that agriculture is gone. There aren't any big cities here, and there isn't even a traffic light. Kawana Kakai is the biggest city here, where about 3,500 people live, which is half the island's total population. A home here is about 350 k so it's going to be far cheaper here than most other places on these islands. And look at these views. These are the world's tallest sea cliffs, everybody. Wow. There's a hotel here, but really, it's not over-touristy, and there's not too many places to live. The few people who live here are very protective of keeping the place small and rural. The saying is, don't change Molokai, let Molokai change you. That's a lesson we're going to learn throughout this video. This is the type of place you need to blend in with the locals. As we discussed, Hawaii is a melting pot of cultures with people coming from around the world to live here. But just because you moved to Hawaii doesn't mean you're Hawaiian. You must actually have Hawaiian blood to be considered Hawaiian. If you move here, you're just a local. Because Hawaiian is a culture, it's a race, a language, and a people. Native Hawaiians, which are a mix of Asian and South Pacific nations, have a strong sense of family. Everybody loves their aunties and uncles and their brothers and sisters. And you may not be aware of this, but there's a lot of discrimination here in Hawaii. And if you're white or look white, you'll be called a haole. That's kind of a degrading term for white people. It means without breath. Because the first white people native Hawaiians saw looked very white to them, like dead people look white. Here in Hawaii, it's more resentment than discrimination, though. Like, they're resentful that America came over and conquered Hawaii and then turned it into another state. And now, we treat Hawaii like America's playland. Many locals despise tourists, and if you're white, you're going to be bullied or treated with scorn, especially if you act entitled or superior. So, blend in if you move here. Respect the culture. That means you, Karen. Now we're going to leave Molokai and head over to the next Hawaiian island, Lanai. 
Lanai is a teeny little island. It's only 18 miles across. It's about the same size as Detroit. It's the smallest inhabited island that you can get to in the chain. Now you probably won't move here because the guy who founded Oracle, Larry Ellison, owns like 98% of this island. He bought it for like 300 million bucks. The other 2% of this island is owned by the state. The biggest city here is called Lanai City, where there's 3,000 people and going down by the year. A lot of the island is only accessible by four-wheel drives on dirt roads, and there's only a couple hotels here too. If you did move here for some reason, your kids would have one school to choose from, Lanai High and Elementary School. Needless to say, but I'll say it, you'd better have a remote job if you moved here, or be retired, or just start up a software company, I guess. It's pretty here though. Homes are going to set you back about a half a million bucks, but talk about island fever. There's literally nothing to do here. Maybe that's a good thing. I mean, if you want to escape from the world, this is the place to do it, people. The next island we're going to visit is going to be Little Cahola Way. That's sort of how you say it. Now, you definitely can't move here because it's uninhabitable. Hundreds of years ago, natives used this island for fishing and hunting and for worship. But then the U.S. military began using it for training and for bombing grounds. And they really messed this place up. Now, that didn't sit well with the native Hawaiians. And in 1976, boats with 50 people came over to this island to run the military off. Some of them even died on their journey over here. Well, it worked though, and today we don't use it for bombing anymore. The whole place was turned into a reserve. Natives still go there and do things, but besides a bunch of animals, it's remote, so there is no reason to stay here. In fact, we might get bullied if we stay here any longer. So let's hop on a plane. It's only a 30 minute flight to Maui. Now Maui might be the coolest place to live in Hawaii. It still has the really pretty remote locations and amazing beaches that the other islands have, but it's not as overrun with tourists and has a little bit of city life too. It's kind of the mama bear of the Hawaiian islands. Just right. Maui's 50 miles long and 26 miles wide. It's about the same size as the city of Jacksonville. There's 160,000 people here and the population's actually going up. One of the few places in Hawaii that can say that. Maui's very laid back. There's just miles and miles of untouched beaches here. A lot of people smoke weed and surf and work their little jobs, usually showing up late. If you moved here all stressed out and pissed off at life, and you didn't become more laid back after being here for a while, well then you have a bigger problem to figure out, pal. The sticker shock, though, might be enough to add stress. This is the most expensive place you can live in the state. It's about a million bucks for a single family home, and condos are even 600,000. The western dry side of Maui has a bunch of popular beaches. Lahaina is the biggest city where there's 11,000 people. A home here is about 800K, as it would be in nearby Kihei, but this is where all the tourists are too. The north side of the island has an airport and a college and an actual Walmart and a Target people. Those are hard to come by in Hawaii. Kahuli is the biggest city up here with 27,000 people. It's about 720K for a home here. Wailuku also has a good reputation. The west and north sides of the island is where you're going to have a lot of people and things to do. The east and south side of Maui is way more rural and it's going to be a lot more tropical and wet. There's really nothing out here except some super amazing views and some homes scattered throughout. A place like this in Hana with a view like this is going to run you, well, about 800K. Upcountry, here in the middle of the island, is also pricey and it's remote and it has hidden gems all over the place. Some say upcountry is the best place to live on this island. It has a high elevation and is much cooler than the coast. And you can have a garden here. It's definitely more rural. But your neighbors are all going to have roosters, so there's that. And homes here are pushing 900k, so there's that. But Maui is really a special place, people. For our next island stop, we should get all gussied up and charter a big old ship, because we're going somewhere fancy. I don't know how to drive it, but the guy never asked me if I could, so here we go. Ah! Okay, so we crashed the boat. I'll probably get a big bill for that one, but we made it to the big island of Hawaii. Now this place is massive. Well, not really but you could fit all the other islands into this one island alone. The big island is just a little bit smaller than the state of Connecticut. There's only 186,000 people here. There's a lot more land here, so it's actually cheaper to live here than many of the other Hawaiian islands. You can get a place here for somewhere in the 630K-ish range. But of course, there's gonna be really bad areas here you wouldn't wanna live in, and super wealthy areas that you would wanna live in, but cannot, cause you ain't got the moolah, mister. The big islands, mostly small towns, under 10,000 people. Hilo is the biggest city here, and there's only 45,000 people. There's an army base here, so a lot of people in Hilo are into drinking and getting into fights. It's much cooler and rainier on the eastern side of the island here. There's also far less tourists. 
than on the other side of the island. The east side of the big island is by far more affordable than the west side, which has all the resorts like Kona. Actually, the east side of the big island here is the most affordable place to buy a home in the whole state. The bottom corner down here is pretty run down in many areas, and the locals are poor, just like the locals are poor statewide. But you can get a pretty big chunk of land down here for a really affordable price. So there are places on Hawaii that you can afford to move to. The reason the population on the big island is so small and the reason it's so affordable here are for three main reasons. The big island doesn't have nearly as many big, wide, white sand beaches. The surfing here isn't that great and there's active volcanoes on the island. You can drive all around the big island like you can most of the other islands and it's just small towns scattered throughout and it's very mountainous. That's because there's four active volcanoes on Hawaii. So there's lava and former lava flows and smoke and steam spewing out all over the place. So if you have sensitive lungs, you definitely shouldn't live on the big island. Or if you want a house that's actually gonna last a long time, you shouldn't live here, because, you know, this sucks. Kona is the biggest city on the western side of the island where there's 12,000 people. This is the big island's big beach vacation epicenter, so if you moved here, you'd have annoying tourists in town all day long. The west and south side of the big island are also much hotter, and you've got that volcano smoke over here too, so look out for that. <coughs> Jobs-wise, again, it's going to be tourist-centric. There's some government jobs, and if you're into healthcare or education, you'd have a go at it. But again, jobs don't really pay well enough to help you really get ahead in life in Hawaii. With an average job, you can keep your head above water, but you ain't swimming very far. There really are only two seasons in Hawaii. Summer is May through October when it's gonna be 85 every day, and then winter, when it's gonna be 78 every day. I mean, look at the temperature for any given week in May. It doesn't change much. When it does get to 60 degrees at night, people actually wear sweaters. It actually does snow in Hawaii at the top of many of the state's volcanoes. At the top of Mauna Kea, which is 14,000 feet, there's areas you can drive up and ski down, but there's no actual ski lifts. Some people say you'd be lucky to live in Hawaii. Sure, it's super pretty and laid back in many areas, but this state and these islands all have problems you'd find on the mainland, just in smaller doses. If you're lucky enough that money isn't a problem, then Hawaii can be a super great place to live. But for many people, it's just way too expensive. If you move here, don't make the mistake of packing every single thing you own. A big mistake you'd regret is paying to have everything you own shipped here. On Hawaii, less is more. You'll learn to live with less stuff. Most homes don't have air conditioning. Most don't have insulation. The roads are narrow. The grocery stores aren't gonna have things you really need at that one moment. It really is a simple lifestyle here and you have to learn to go with the flow. You know the saying, hang loose. As a tourist, you've been laid, you ooed and awed at the beauty, you drank your Mai Tais, you took a bunch of pictures and you left. Hopefully you were respectful because lots of tourists are not respectful of the land or the culture. Hawaii has a very distinct culture and if you want to live here, rather than just visit, you have to take it on its own terms. Hawaii's not going to cater to you, nor should it have to. If you move here and you get into the groove of the islands and do accept the culture and really become a part of it, you'll see it's one of the best places to live in the world. The people there are, for the most part, really friendly and inviting, as long as you treat them the same way. Come here with gratitude and an open mind and respect for the culture. Don't be a jerk. Blend in. Oh, and just get a tattoo. You'll fit in much better. Well, that was a pretty cool video, wasn't it? We learned a lot about Hawaii, didn't we? Well, it can be one of the most beautiful places you'll ever see. In a lot of areas, it's just like where you're from. It can be crowded, dirty, and expensive. It just kind of depends on where you go. Speaking of go, I gotta get on that cruise ship over there. I spent so much time showing you guys around that I didn't have time to island hop myself, so. I gotta go. Hasta luego. Au revoir. Aloha. Means goodbye. If you have a life with lots of money, this could be a place where you could grow. But if you want a life that is so crummy, then there's also places that are just like way back home. But it's Hawaii, you should go make the call. Ah, la 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 aloha. Hawaii, you should go make the call. Ah, la 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 aloha. Puff that magic dragon. 
down by the sea where surfers surf and ladies lay in the land of Hawaii. Life can be so gentle where the land is always green, where summer is a daily dose, where chill is company. Somewhere over the ocean, someone's blue. Life is not always easy, no matter where you move. Somewhere over the ocean, someone's blue. They thought this would be dreamland, but it is not always true. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great! You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching, and remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nix Manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production. And are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. Like if somebody was gonna move there, where where would they likely wanna live on your island and like what's life like in Kauai? So um, it all depends on the person. So depending on where you're at in the island, you'll have different weather. Um, if you're on the east, uh, if you're on the east side of the island, like Lahui or Kapa'a, um, it's gonna be wetter and a little bit cooler. It's going to be a lot wetter. Um, if you're on the south side, it's going to be drier and warmer. And if you're on the west side, it's going to be the driest and the warmest. Um, like over here in Kekaha, we average like 22 inches of rain a year. And uh, over in Lahui on the uh, east side, you get up to like 90. So it's mm. completely different because the island, the mountains in the middle of the island. So depending on where you're at is where you're going to find... Um, like what weather suits the person. So, I mean, it gets very hot and it stays very dry here all, all summer long on, in my area of the island on the west. So it'll be, we'll go weeks without rain and mm -hmm. um, you'll have a 10 day forecast of solid 88 degree temperature all throughout the summer. It gets very yeah. hot. In the winter, the highs are about um, 78 which is nice. So it fluctuates about 10 degrees. And then at night in the winter, it gets pretty cool down to, I think I've seen it in the low sixties here, but it's really consistent all year round. And it's like that on all the islands. Um, excuse me. Uh, the West side of all of the islands typically are drier than the uh, East side. Mm -hmm. uh, just because of the way the weather moves across the mountains and, uh, up in the mountains here, uh, in Kauai, we actually have, it's one of the wettest places on earth. The The state and the locals will claim that it is uh, it is the wettest place. It's not, but it's up there. It, it receives upwards of 400 inches of rain a year. Oh, man. So it's extremely wet up there. It's so beautiful, though. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've seen pictures. That's all videos of it. Um, so, like, is it is it for somebody that has a family that's trying to, start a life and, and has a regular job and a regular day-to-day -day thing is that is Kauai somewhere that they would fit in and be able to live their life or would they have to move down to like Oahu or like somewhere else um yeah so Kauai is definitely the more rural and laid back of some of the other islands um a lot of people here uh, that I know who have moved here they come here to raise a family they say it's great the school systems are good um, I coached at the schools here. Uh, they're, they're great schools. 
um, outdoor schools, which is weird. They're mm, like, they don't have hallways or anything. They're just different buildings around the campus. Kind of neat. Mm-hmm. But um, no, it's definitely a family island. Uh, very relaxed. Um, crime is low here. Property crime is the highest. Um, like it's the highest form of crime. We don't get murders or anything like that. Hardly ever. Um, yeah. Property crime is relative. It's, it's about moderate, but it's low crime here. Overall, the policing is great. Um, yeah, very laid back beach lifestyle. Uh, Oahu is like bigger city, higher crime, just like Oahu is any other big city in the U S um, sort of. So, but uh yeah definitely a family place you can move here and you as long as you're as long as you can fit into a relaxed lifestyle it, it's good like there's a thing mm-hmm. here that pe- the locals call hawaii time it's a real thing they're like businesses here will be closed whenever they want no matter what their business hours say they'll open whenever they want they'll take breaks it's weird um when when the surf's up they're out there surfing the businesses are closed <laughs> Can you get a job if you live there? I mean, can I move there and establish a job or am I going to be like struggling to find work um, on your on, island? On Kauai, it's going to, it's going to be a little hard. Uh, if you have, if you have something set up before you come, that's obviously ideal. Um, but coming here, if you're living in Lahui or Kapa'a, you have a better chance of, uh, of, um, uh, of finding a job. So the three biggest employers on the island are um, the biggest employer is Wilcox Hospital, which is the main hospital for the island. Um, and so there's Kauai Community College, the only college we have on the island. It's actually known for its nursing program because so many people here become nurses because um, mm. it's one of the better professions to get into here that has jobs available. The second biggest employer on the island is... Um, well, it's kind of because their their company name just changed because of weird contract things, but it used to be known as Monokai. Now it's called Koalani. Um, basically, it's a massive subcontracting organization. They have everything from janitors to armed security. So they they manage all sorts of different jobs for people. So that's huge. And then the third biggest employer is the military base on Kauai, which is PMRF Barking Sands. And they employ just over a thousand people. So, um, yeah, I mean, it depends. You could you could find a job, but um, it's hard to find a good paying job unless you unless you're specialized in something that uh, that Kauai needs. Um, but you, like, there's a lot of business owners here because there's lots of tourism. Tourism is a huge employer here, uh, but it's. Uh, like all sorts of different tours and guides and whatnot because Kauai relies heavily on tourism. Uh, the population of Kauai, I think is just about 70,000 and um, like pre pandemic tourism at any given time, the population of the Island was doubled with tourists. So we'd get between 60 and 80,000 tourists um, at any given time. So it, it, it's busy and traffic here sucks. Cause there's one, there's one highway and, uh, yeah, it, it gets rough. So you're talking about just Kauai, right? Yes. When you say traffic and put one road. So I hear so I've been listening to people on forums and doing talk to people and there seems to be this whole like Hawaii from someone that's never been to Hawaii may think um, it's a place that's all tropical and perfect paradise. But when you talk to people that live there, they're like, it's dirty, it's crowded. You've got ghettos. You've got rude people. That there's racism here. It's it's just like anywhere else in America. Would you say that's accurate? Um, yeah, I could talk on that a little bit. So the island of Kauai is pretty clean. I'm impressed by it. Uh, the locals keep it pretty clean. Um, some places on the island get dirtier than others. Uh, homelessness is huge here. Uh, voluntary homelessness is a thing where people will move, save up money and move from the mainland to not live anywhere here um, because of the weather and climate and everything like that. Um, no ghettos on, uh, on Kauai, really. It's it's small towns. Like the biggest city is 10,000 people. There's run down areas um, and afford, like affordable housing projects and stuff like that. But I mean, most of the time people just they really just smoke their weed and mind their own business. Like there's not a whole lot of crime here, but, um, 
uh, crowding, it gets crowded. The traffic here, uh, it, it gets very crowded. Like the, the public beaches, technically all the beaches on Kauai are public um, in all of Hawaii. You can't own a beach here, but there's places that are less accessible. And like the, the more accessible beaches and tourist areas get very crowded here. Um, yeah. Uh, and by saying those things, I didn't mean Kauai. I just meant the state in general. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. in terms of like the, the traffic and the the crime and the litter and the, the attitude and the poverty. I mean, that's statewide. It's yes. Just it like it is here in America. It's just Oahu. a really prettier, a lot prettier. Yeah. Oahu gets dirty. Um, the Some of the other mm -hmm. islands get very dirty. And I've heard uh, the expressways on Oahu are some of the most, like uh, some of the worst traffic in the world or in the U S um, like the H one and all that. Like, I've just heard it's it's incredible how um, crowded it is it is over there and um, uh, yeah people I've met a lot of very good locals but a lot of locals have a huge dislike for tourists even though they're on their homes and like their their islands depend on tourism but they'll have this massive dislike for tourists um, not all of them there's a lot of great people but. Uh, yeah, the, the, if you look like a tourist and they're very easy to pick out, it's very easy to pick out a tourist. They, um, yeah, they'll, they'll treat you way differently. <laughs> they look like me. If I, if I, do you think I'd look like a tourist if I was walking around oh, right now and, and I was doing little. this, like taking business <laughs> flu. So like, I hear that they don't like white people because the natives, because like, you know, we took their land just like the native Americans are upset about that still. Is there like this whole like what's the term? Hey, Haole, hello, hey, Haole, Haole. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, like they don't like white people. Yeah, so Haole it it means um, it means person without breath, I believe, is what it translates to technically. And uh, and legend has it that goes back to when the first white people came here, and they um, uh, the only time they've ever seen somebody so white was when they were dead. And so they they nicknamed them Howleys, um, but yeah, they um. So it's not it's not all the locals by any means. Um, there's a lot of great locals here, but there is a lot of locals who will treat you differently because um because you're white. And they'll tell you too. They'll call you Howley. They'll they'll yell at you. <laughs> yeah, you know, like uh, going down some of the more predominantly local neighborhoods and stuff. Like you'll wave at you'll. I've waved at people before and they just stare you down angrily. Like they don't, they don't, you, you clearly, you feel very unbelonging there. <laughs> it's a, uh, yeah, I, I've never felt, at least on my island, I've never felt like threatened by it, but it's definitely very unwelcoming sometimes. But again, there's a lot of great so, local people here. But. Yeah. So are you going to live there after you're done with your, your service time? Are you going to stay in Hawaii? Or are you going to? Absolutely no. not. No, why? Way, why is that? Way, way too hot for me. Way too expensive. Um, yeah, this place is incredibly expensive. I went to a, I went to a local market the other day, and this is pretty common. And I went to buy a watermelon because my wife really wanted watermelon, and she said, "I'm gonna weigh it for you first. Um, our prices are different here, you know." And I was like, "Yeah, I, I know. I live here." And she weighed it for me, and uh, it was twenty six dollars for a watermelon. She was what? like. Yeah, she was like, "Do you still want it?" I was like, "No, no, thank you. I'm okay." Um, what were you expecting the price to be? I was expecting around fifteen. The, fifteen dollars for a watermelon. It was. Yeah. So do you get? Isn't there like a local discount that you can say? I'm a, like, what's the term that you can say? Like local discount. Yeah, it's called Kamaina. Um, yes. Not all, not all places do it, and most grocery stores do not. It's more so for okay. like uh, tourism activities. Um, local businesses that provide services, souvenir shops, things like that. You can ask for Pomaina. Um, yeah, like restaurants and grocery stores don't really do that. Uh, milk is on average six to eight dollars here. Um, yeah, six dollars is a steal. But yeah, I mean, services, everything is just in way more expensive than anywhere else, as you could imagine. But yeah. You know. So how do people afford to live there then? I, that's, that's the big thing that I uh, struggle to understand, to understand too. Like um, I know some of uh, the civilians that I work, that I work with in my job every day, um, they'll, they'll talk about and be excited about, about making 60 to 70 grand a year. 
and that just blows my mind because like um I have a friend who lives in affordable housing out in town and her affordable housing is a two bedroom studio and it's uh I think thirteen hundred a month. Like it's it's still extremely expensive and it's a small place. Mm -hmm. Um my house is uh granted I don't pay for it, thankfully, but it's twenty two hundred a month. Like it's extremely expensive to live here. Um car insurance is extremely cheap. That's a plus. Um yeah, it's one of the cheaper places to get car insurance. I mean, I insure my car for like um uh, like eighty bucks a month. It's a brand new car, so um that's really nice. That's a that's a plus of of this uh this place but i mean everything else you could take the uh the price of everything on the mainland and double or triple it at least mm. so so of all the islands where would you say is the best place for somebody to move that's going to have jobs things to do good schools it's not Job. too crowded and Ooh, hmm. that's a little hard but um so a lot of what I've gathered and experienced, the uh, the island with the best balance between rural and undercrowding and relaxed life and city is going to be Maui. It's um it's kind of got the best of both worlds. Uh, it's got your your forested areas, your rural areas, your outskirts, and it's got some of its cities uh, that are very nice. Oahu is pretty much just city, and places like Kauai are pretty much just rural. So it's quiet and i don't understand how farmers make it by here either because farming is a huge thing here but i mean i just don't understand how they afford it <laughs> but yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah definitely maui for a more balanced aspect of jobs and lifestyle and crowding and whatnot you know so is there a, do the cultures blend there do the do the white folks hang out with the Polynesians and do the Hispanics hang out with the Japanese people or is everybody kind of like in their own little like world over there? So, and it sounds bad. There is some uh, some people do hang out together. They they mix and hang out together, but there is definitely um, places and areas on the island that are very much one race or the other. Um, like on my island, for example, when you go up to the North shore, it's, uh, much more white people. Um, and when you come over here to the West side or the South side, it's, it's much more the local population. And, um, uh, they, they definitely hang out in their own groups for the, not the most part, but a lot of times the, the locals definitely embrace the, um, the Filipinos and the Japanese culture, uh, because that's that's mostly what the locals are. The locals are usually a mix of native Hawaiian blood and one or more other races. Mm -hmm. um, usually Filipino or Japanese, because those are the two predominant uh, uh, ethnicities and ancestries on the islands. For sure, definitely Filipinos and Japanese. Um, you see everywhere in the food, in the culture. Um, the, the food is very... Uh, pork and rice based the pork comes from the native hawaiian side the rice comes from the uh, more oriental side um yeah and, and japanese restaurants are everywhere uh, filipino cuisine is everywhere they have like plate lunches are all uh um like most of the grocery stores will carry plate lunches like in warmers and it's always like pork on rice or portuguese sausage there's a lot of portuguese influence here as well um not as much, but you see a lot in the food. Portuguese uh, sausage, Port um, uh, Portuguese bean soup, I think I've seen before. I've never tried it, but Portuguese sausage is great. Um, yeah, it's it's really cool the um, the mix and how you see how the islands have embraced the different cultures that they've experienced over time because it just uh, it carries over in their food and their lifestyle, and uh, it's pretty neat. Lots of fish here, as you can imagine. Lots of fresh caught fish. Ahi, which is tuna, um, is huge here. Um, yeah, and fishing is one of the biggest pastimes here. And I'm a big fisherman myself, and I would not want to come here to fish. It's uh, it's not the best fishing, but maybe it's because I'm not good at it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm terrible at fishing too. <laughs> I don't have the I just don't have the patience. I never really now if somebody were to be like, go stand right there and and use this bait, and then I could probably i'd probably be fine but like 
I don't know where to go out here. I live right on the coast. I don't know what bait to use. I don't know what I'm looking for. So a lot of times I'm just, you know, screwing around, drinking a beer, yeah. staring at my line. Yeah, I mean that's a good I guess time. that's what, I guess that's what fishing is, right? Yeah, that's that's a lot of what they do here. The locals will drive their <laughs> trucks on the beach, even though by law you're not supposed to. It's not enforced. Um, they'll drive their trucks on the beach. They'll have giant get-togethers. They'll throw poles in the water and just get drunk and smoke weed till late in the night. <laughs> So weed's legal there then? No, it is not. Oh, it's not legal. Okay. <laughs> no, is it is it not. medical? Medical? Yes. Is medically, it right? Medically okay. it's legal. Um the governor of, of Hawaii, his name is Governor Ige. He is um it's odd because um uh, typically when you look at like politics, it's a, a very two sided argument. But our governor, Governor Ige, is a Democrat and he um he doesn't support the legalization of weed. The last I, the last things I've heard and seen, which is interesting to me, because it, I mean it's a it's a it's a big part of local culture here, and um, I think it's up on the ballot again this year, I think. And there's a lot of mixed people think it'll get passed. People think it won't. I I have no clue. I don't know how it's not how it's not legal here yet, but it isn't. It's still illegal. So. Oh. Yeah. I mean, all I hear about is people smoking weed over there. I know. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely a big thing you hear about all the time and see and smell everywhere you go, but whatever. So, so for the people that are, that move there and buy a home and bring their family over and all their stuff, I don't, I guess they have it shipped over. Um, are these mostly wealthy Americans that are retiring that are like, I've got a million dollars to spend on a house and a bunch more money to live here. Or is it like other middle-class people moving over here and struggling to like, who's moving over there? So from my experience, there is a lot of wealthy people um, who will move here and buy up land and houses and whatnot, especially in the more wealthy areas, obviously. But um, I know a lot of people who move here, uh, because they're guaranteed a job through some uh, uh, through some employer or the other, and they move here on a contract that they will work for this company for a couple of years, and then basically they'll reassess their contract. But um, yeah, these people they'll move here, and the other way that like people can even afford to buy houses here is because, and I've never seen it anywhere else in the U.S. The common uh, mortgage is fifty years here. It's not 20 like the rest of the U.S. Yeah. The common, 50 year loan. <laughs> yeah. 50 year mortgage because like you'll have these rundown, you'll have these rundown houses on less than an acre of property that are uh, blocks and blocks off the beach, like back buried in the town for, I've seen them, I mean, three, four hundred thousand dollars You don't get cheaper than that. And they're small, hmm. but um, yeah, things that like uh, back where I'm from in Michigan, uh, I mean, not now because the whole housing market's up, but uh, like five years ago, you could have bought for a hundred thousand so or less. Yeah, it's like that everywhere right now. So yeah, um, wealthy people moving here, people who already have a uh, a job lined up for them or people who have family here or lived here when they were younger. You'll see a lot of people moving back, but a lot of the locals, so many of the locals I talk about, they want to leave here. Um they're interested in leaving Hawaii for it's expensive, it's expenses, it's politics, all different things. Um, and I have almost every single one of them that I've talked to talk about moving to Nevada or Oregon. Um, and a lot of the Nevada comes from so many of the, the locals here vacation to Las Vegas for some reason. It's, it's a huge, um, vacation destination for the locals and so a lot of them are moving to las vegas and i'm pretty sure um i'm pretty sure i read not too long ago that the highest population of um hawaiian-born citizens living outside of hawaii is nevada i believe but uh yeah a lot of people talking about moving to nevada a lot of people talking about moving to oregon um a lot of the locals just wanting to leave here but um claiming they can't afford to leave here. Like that, that's their biggest thing holding them back is I can't afford to leave. Like I can't afford to pick up and move and not have a job, things like that. So it's almost like they're kind of trapped here. And it's sad because 
so many of the people I know here live paycheck to paycheck, just trying to pay their their rent and their car loan, and I mean, trying to get by. So, yeah, and yeah, I hear the- I hear losing losing a lot of people there. I right hear, yeah, and uh, yeah, lifted trucks are the predominant form of transportation here. <laughs> Everybody okay. buys their old Tacomas and lifts them un- ungodly amounts. So <laughs> that's yeah. I don't know if you're not cool if you don't have a lifted truck here. I don't know. <laughs> okay. So if I move there, I need to get a lifted truck. Absolutely. Yeah. And you have to have a sticker on the back that says home. And the O in home has to be the shape of your island that you live on. That's okay. it's, like, it, it's like something you have to do if you are going to live here. So. <laughs> okay. It's mandatory. Yes. <laughs> So, like, are the people that are coming over that you talk to that are not in the military that are just regular people that are yeah. maybe new to the state? What's their perception of the state? Are they like, oh my God, this is amazing? Or are they like, oh God, what did I get myself into? A little both? Like, what's the newcomer's perspective that, that moved to Hawaii? Yeah. So, overall, most of uh, like, the like the average reaction that i see is they they move here they love it it's tropical paradise it's homely it's quiet it's relaxed and then as they live here a little bit longer it starts to get a little bit like island fever like okay like there's not a whole lot of stuff to do here um and then they start to realize just how expensive everything is um and then they start to get a little bit worried and things like that but most people get by um a lot of people love it here because it's so relaxed and a lot of people move as soon as they move here they leave again because they realize oh this isn't sustainable i can't do this so Mm. they just go back to where they're from yeah they just go back to the mainland anywhere in the mainland out of here if they can afford it so yeah do people travel from island to island often like how how often do you go to oahu or how often do people down in maui go down to the big island like do do, do they get back and forth and are they on boats um yeah so it's it's very often um especially probably the biggest motivator for island hopping is so many of the local population here because their families are huge they're very expansive and most of their families live on multiple islands and so they'll hop island island to visit them multiple times a year because uh, flights inner island aren't too expensive. You can find them uh, for cheap down like sixty dollars, um, and then you can find them probably. Between- Say that again. Sorry, we cut off the. I don't know the Wi-Fi cut out. Um, so. Island hopping family, and then you were gonna say how they get there and how much is it? Sorry. Yeah. Um. They they hop island to island to visit family a lot of times is the biggest motivator. Yeah. that will work and um they fly usually um most people don't there's no like ferry service or anything like that um some flying is the biggest thing and there's only there's only two airlines that operate inner island and that's um hawaiian airlines and then southwest airlines just started operating inner island so before hawaiian had a monopoly on the pricing and um, Southwest just came in and drove their prices down. So you can fly between islands uh, one way for as cheap as $30 on Southwest now. And and Hawaiian's always been um, a little more expensive, but I'd say you can find um, round trip flights between islands for between 60 and $130 usually. So it's not too expensive. People move around for work. Um, they island hop for work and for family mostly um and then just to visit too like i don't i don't island hop much unfortunately because it's a pain in the butt for me to get off time but uh yeah oahu we go to relatively often just to more so to live up the city life for a few days because we don't have that here there's no nightclubs on this island there's no um like there's one or two like late bars on the island all the businesses close before like six o'clock like it's yeah, they, they roll up the sidewalks really early. So, yeah, that's got to be a short flight, like, well, like 15 minute flight on a huge airliner. So, yeah. So, like, from takeoff to landing, it's pro- it's less than 30 minutes between yeah. us and Oahu. And I think we, I think Kauai and Oahu are the two islands that are the furthest apart. It's about 90 miles from coast to coast. You can't mm-hmm. Oahu from our island. 
Um, but yeah, the flights are very short, like probably 20 minutes. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty secluded out here. So, yeah, I mean, it sounds like it's a, you know, a very beautiful laid back in some areas place, but I mean, it depends on which Island you're on. I mean, if you're going to live on o- in Oahu, it sounds like you're going to be living in somewhere that's just like the rest of America. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it is beautiful. You can't, you can't beat the scenery or the beauty here, but I mean, it has its ups and downs. It's an expensive place <laughs> and secluded. But. So what are people saying about the future of Hawaii? Like, are they talking about what's coming up for that state? I know you haven't been there long, but have you heard anybody saying Hawaii is changing in any way or what the future of the state is? I know they're losing people in that yeah. state. Um, um, so the only, the only thing I can really talk to on that is uh, I've heard a lot about the housing market here uh from the locals just talking about how it's it's got to be approaching a point of collapse at some point because it's just so incredibly expensive um and that's why a big reason so many people are leaving and another interesting thing that you'll hear it's not a very big group of people who talk about this it's a very small group but it has like very heartfelt support and that is uh i mean independence essentially but they they want to get rid of the tourists they want to become their own state and govern their own populace and it's like like i just this the entire all of the islands here operate on tourism like during during the pandemic we lost um on our island i think it was like 20 to 30 percent of um small businesses closed for good so many of my favorite restaurants and so many of the local um, souvenir shops and boutiques and things like that closed for good. And it, it was rough. And that was just, I mean, we had, we have one movie theater on the Island and it lasted two weeks into the pandemic and it was closed for good. Like everything just, I, they lost so much from, uh, from the pandemic that if they were ever to go, and like reject tourism altogether or try to actually make an independence movement. I just, I don't see how they could. No, that's not going to happen. They're, yeah. You're stuck. You're stuck with us. <laughs> so where did those people go that like, you know, the, the local restaurant guy that had been there for 30 years, who closed down. Did he leave the Island? Did he go, did he move away to the U S did he? I honestly, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know how some places are remaining open. I mean, there's pl- there's places that open their doors and nobody comes in. I don't I don't get it. It blows my mind. Um, still, after everything's over with. Yeah, I mean, we we do have a lot of tourists here now, but there's still places who don't have um, the people. I mean, Hawaii is still the uh, like um, our COVID regulations are still the strictest out of I think any other state. Now we don't even have a plan to completely reopen our economy, and even California does. Like everywhere else is dropping mask mandates. We aren't, it's, it's crazy out here in our, I mean, I don't know. It's just, I, yeah, I don't know how people, I, I question it all the time. I don't know how people survive out here just like bartending. Like that's, that'll be their job. And maybe they make great money bartending off the tourists, but I don't get it. It's just, I don't know what they do. <laughs> hmm. When you got stationed in Hawaii, were you like thrilled, like hell yeah? Uh, yeah, I was very excited, and I mean, it's a beautiful place, and it's been a great experience, but it's um, it's getting old. So, yeah, <laughs> time to head back. Where Where are you going back to? I'm going back to Michigan, where I'm from. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, that's a great state. <laughs> where are but you I'm ever going to go back to Hawaii again? Um, I don't think I'll need to. No, it's not. I got I got other places that I want to visit for um for the five thousand dollars it would cost me to come back and do a vacation here. I could. It's five thousand dollars to fly there. No, uh, I meant just like vacation total. Uh, Flying, yeah. Like when I fly home, the round trip tickets are about six hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, okay, that's. It's not too bad, but not at all. But my wife and I are planning our next vacation to Oahu in uh, July, and that for five days is looking at about three grand. So to go right next door. Yes. You're, you're only going 80 miles on a plane. What is, how much is a hotel over there? Um, we're finding them for decently cheap. Um, 
about $150 a night. Not too bad for some small places. Car rentals are through the roof right now. It's incredible. Even the locals talk about how they're ripping off the tourists. Um, I don't know if they're trying to make up for COVID or whatnot, but there's lines at the airport here that are over an hour long. I know because my parents just visited and um, there's people who get there with rental car reservations and they don't have any cars for them. They don't have any. And um, they're charging these people, no joke, 250 to 350 dollars a day for car rentals it's insane um yeah and just i mean the biggest thing is the most expensive part of visiting here or living here is lodging and then probably just sustenance food and everything and uh mm -hmm. going out to eat is extremely expensive i mean you can't draft beers here for a happy hour you might be able to find them for four dollars so i mean yeah normal. that's not that bad no, that's not bad for happy hour, but last night, I mean, I, I had one beer at this local restaurant up in Lahui, and it was $8, so. For a draft beer? Yeah, and I had a pina colada on the beach the other day at, it's the Marriott, um, in one of the hugely tourist areas, and this is where they're ripping off the tourists, that, um, that pina colada, it was, it was a pina colada, it was a double shot, so that, that was a thing, but it was, it was $22, <laughs> like Twenty-two dollars for a pina colada. Actually, I've I've been to there's, I've had that when I was overseas. I mean, I've I've had drinks that were that expensive. Not often. Yeah. In San Francisco, it's like twenty bucks for a damn Moscow Mule. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, so that I mean, I guess that's not too different. Um, in in case you're curious, all the locals drink Heineken here. That's yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, Heineken is the big thing. But Heine. Yeah, I, I don't. Mm -mm. No, thanks.